Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. I hope that we can inspire your spirit today. I want to do a follow-up. This video is a follow-up to the channel I did with River Phoenix. So if you haven't watched that video, go ahead and watch the River Phoenix Afterlife channel first, and then come back here and check in with me. Sometimes I like to do a follow-up because I am really curious. Like I wanna know, because when I went into this channel, I didn't know a whole lot about River Phoenix, just kind of what I could maybe recall or remember, and I did not research ahead of time. Therefore, I really was going in blind. And so I wanted to um, check in with you and follow up with some of the things that came up in the video after I've now watched it and I did some fact checking. So first of all, I had um, kind of a time span with him. I felt like, and you all know if you've watched my videos, I am not great with numbers and I'm not great with names. So the exact timing or dates of things, I'm just not that great at and ages, not that great at. And so that's my little disclaimer. However, I was pretty close with him. He actually died when he was 23 years old in October of 1993. He died on Halloween and he did die of a, a overdose at the famous Hollywood, the famous uh, Viper Room, all right, in California. And he, so when I did the age, I could feel that he wasn't 30, wasn't 29, wasn't 28, maybe 27. And I kind of kept feeling like, and then at 25, maybe 27, he was 23. But that is also significant because the 27 piece kept feeling strong for me. So that would be four years after his death. Okay, so four years after his death. And so I, so I set that aside. Then another piece of information that came through was uh, a time span like maybe when he was famous, sometimes actors or actresses or famous people give me times when they were like really big or times when that were time spans that were important to them in their lives. And what he gave me, what I got for him, I think was 19, trying to remember, 1988, I think it was, 88 or 89, I think it was 88, to 1997. Well, 1997 is, again, four years after his death which relates or correlates to me thinking he was 27 or feeling like he may have been, you know, there's something significant about four years after his death. And so I wanted to follow up on that. I wanted to follow up on that. And so I called my husband because uh, it's nice to have somebody to talk about this stuff with and he's super used to it. He deals with it all the time and he's all in for me. And so, he, um, I was talking to my husband and told him I was going to channel River Phoenix today because that's who was, was with me, really prevalent, right before I stepped into channel. And then after, of course, I contacted him and said, okay, so I need to do some fact checking. Uh, let's have some, I want to talk to you about some things that came up in the session. So we did. And he, he had said that, there's a couple other things too I want to, I'm looking at, I have a little notebook in front of me. Um, I want to get to a couple of other things too. Let me just write this down so we can revisit a couple of things I shared. I have more information about it now. So um, he shared that four years after his death, there was a couple of things that came out. 1997 was significant and significant in connection to River Phoenix because there's some things that came out. Um, there were a couple of songs that he collaborated on with um, the group Red Hot Chili Peppers, I believe. And uh, I, I don't know if he just collaborated with one person from that band or if it was the whole group, but some of the songs came out that he was um, accredited with. There's also a reference to him in some musical or a play. And there was also a book that was dedicated to him as well that came out that year. So there were some things that came out during that time. I'm not sure if this is what, why I got that timeline, but I feel like there is significance. And I, and I was talking to my husband, I said, four years after he died, there's something important. And if you know him or know his family, it could be a family thing or a close friend thing. Um, something important, 1997 to River Phoenix. If you know, please put that in the comments. 1997, River Phoenix, something important. Please put that in the comments below. I'm curious about that. I would like to know more from you. Also, I want to um, get into some of the vibes about 
he talked about his crossing over, his, his death and his funeral. And so at first when I asked him, or I, I, I didn't, I shouldn't say I asked him, I don't remember if I actually point blank asked him and said, are you buried in California? You know, I kind of assume that many actors or actresses are. Um, that's my assumptions, that's my mind, my humanness coming into session. And as I've recorded other videos before, it totally does that all the time. And guess what? This is a shocker, but I can be wrong. It happens, you know. I can misinterpret, I can just be wrong because I'm projecting, right? This might be one of those cases, but I don't think so. Because I right away I said, yes, he was buried. He was, um, I don't remember how I used the words. His resting place was in California. And right away, yes is what I felt because he, he has an interesting sense of humor. <laughs> and I mean, he can be funny without you don't, you're like, I don't really know you that well, so I don't realize how, that you're being funny right now. But he was referring to his death, that he died on the streets in California. And that's like literally his final resting place, boom, right there, you know, on the sidewalk there. And he did talk very explicitly about pictures being taken of him when he's dead. He's like, I was a dead guy laying on the sidewalk and public view and people are taking pictures. He's like, like this is so not kosher kind of thing. This is not cool. Like this is so not what I thought my, my life would be like. I don't want to be known for being the dead guy on the sidewalk. You know, I don't want to be known that you don't want to be known for that kind of a thing. And so then I discovered, my husband actually told me, and this is really creepy, and some of you, if you're fans of River Phoenix, you will know this, that, so during part of the, the video when we were channeling and I was talking to River, he gave me this distinct impression. So after his death, he, sh he showed me that he saw his funeral and he showed me that he saw his body like at the morgue or something, like laying at the morgue, like on you know, a morgue-like setting, and um, he referred to it as like a CSI thing or something. And like, I, he's like very clearly, I see my body, he says, and it's dead, like it's not pretty. I'm looking at it, and it's not right after the moment of my death, it's in this like other place, and it's like being prepared or what have you. And I'm like, okay. My husband, when I talked to him about some of the stuff that came up in the session, he said, oh my gosh, there's a famous story. That's one of the things my husband found on the, when he Googled it. It's he said, there's a story about how somebody broke in to the funeral home and took a picture of him, his body in the casket. I mean, how, how rude is that to do to somebody? I mean, not just to the person, like River's not gonna care, but for his family and his fans. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. That's not a good thing to do, to be sharing that. And so that's just not, that's distasteful. At the very least, that's totally distasteful. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, he didn't necessarily show me that, but maybe that's what he was doing when he was looking at his body, like being prepared. And I said it was a morgue, you know, maybe that's what he was doing. He was trying to acknowledge that without actually saying it. So I wouldn't look it up because I would totally be curious and look that up. And I'm glad I didn't. And I did not want to see that. So it's okay to see it in spirit and third eye, but not in human. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. All right, but I also said very clearly in the video that it felt like he was cremated and I never really, like to me that's kind of a personal thing and I've never had a spirit give me that feeling like, oh, and I was cremated. I'm like, okay, well now it makes sense. And then I said, well, cause it didn't, cause it felt like maybe there was a memorial in California. I didn't know if like he was there and he was someplace else, but I said, I feel like you're more than one place. Like his, I said, I feel like his ashes or his, his funeral stuff was like more than one place. And it's totally possible that they had a memorial in California. And he specifically said Irvine. I don't know what that connection is yet. You've got to tell me if you know what Irvine means to River Phoenix. What does Irvine, California mean to River Phoenix? Comments below, please. I'm so curious. I have no idea what that means. I really want to know, you guys. I'm curious. And, but he was cremated. So after that funeral casket thing, he was actually cremated and his ashes were scattered at his family's land in Florida, is what my husband said. And so 
I, I'm like, oh, that totally makes sense. That totally makes sense, you know? And I mean, yeah, that just fits. But it's kind of strange, because like I said, that's the first time I've ever had a spirit, like, let me feel or know how, what happened after they died, like that, like the personal details, you know? So interesting. And I, I want to say also that in talking with him, he really felt like an old soul for sure. Like he kind of feels like a reincarnated old movie star. I described it to my husband. I'm like, he's very, he's kind of mysterious, but really professional, but kind of could be really funny and like could really like his personality could be funny, but not in an out there kind of way, but just funny, like knowing him and just really professional like he I think the part of the reason why and he loved movies oh my gosh he loved film oh so just loved it just cinematography oops that's my microphone here cinematography and just loved film just such a respect for film and I'm like oh god it's like he's a reincarnated and it's totally possible wouldn't that be cool to know huh so, but he has that kind of aura, that energy about him. And so, but I think the reason why I didn't want to, I wasn't feeling good, warm, fuzzy vibes from him isn't because of his personality. It's because of the transition, because of all the drama around his actual death and then the aftermath and not just the pain or the sadness from people, but also that he also, I mean, it's so sad. Like after I connected to him, I'm like, it's so unfortunate that he didn't have what he could he have done i compared him to leonardo dicaprio early on in the first video and it's like what could he have accomplished or what kind of legacy today i mean he would have been what like 48 and i mean can you imagine the cool stuff he could have done so i will not um but I don't want you to be sad about that. I know it's hard not to, it's kind of disappointing, right? At the very least. But I will let you know that I do believe he reincarnates. If he hasn't already done so, I believe he will, for sure. Um, I definitely see that in the future, if it hasn't already happened. And I'm not 100% sure because I'm not checking in with him right now, but. Um, so don't be, don't be too sad for too long, all right. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. Remember, the purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Remember, it is your life. So live it. Thanks for being here.